Since late 2007, Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing has grown to be a massive influence in the self-publishing community, establishing themselves as the dominant force that few authors shouldn't avoid. To forgo KDP is to miss out on the largest source of online book sales today. So why do some authors pass on the opportunity? It's because they removed the rose-colored lenses and spotted some glaring blind spots and weaknesses in KDP's platform. Let's discuss 50 problems and solutions with Amazon KDP in no particular order. Number one, no universal book links. KDP doesn't offer a way to share your books beyond copying a region-specific link within your dashboard or visiting the product page for the social sharing feature. When you share a region-specific Amazon link, you're making it harder for international audiences to buy your book. Let's face it, not many people will bother with searching your book in their native Amazon marketplace. Since KDP lacks a way to easily share your book and guide customers to their native Amazon marketplace, you'll have to lean into outside resources like books to read or Booklinker. These services create a universal book link that guides potential readers to their native marketplace and in some instances offers options beyond Amazon like Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and so on. Number two, the 70% ebook royalty. Any ebooks distributed through KDP get a variable royalty rate. For ebooks priced between $2.99 and $9.99, you get a 70% royalty minus a delivery fee based on the file size. For any books priced outside of that zone, you get a 35% royalty with no delivery fee. Also, that 70% royalty only applies to nine out of the 13 regions that they're distributing to. In Japan, India, Brazil, and Mexico, you only get a 35% royalty regardless of the pricing. Any ebooks enrolled in the KDP Select program get 70% in those regions, but again, you have to price it between $2.99 and $9.99 while accounting for the delivery fees. Now, other ebook publishing platforms like Apple, Barnes & Noble Press, Kobo Writing Life, and Google Play Books offer a flat 70% royalty rate per sale of each ebook. Tired of KDP shenanigans? Well, look into those other avenues. Number three, no pre-orders for print. Now, while KDP offers the option to run pre-orders for eBooks, they do not allow it for their print options. Making the situation even more difficult was the ability to order author copies in advance of a book launch. Because your book must be live on Amazon to order them. Now, more recently, KDP opened up the option to schedule print books, though it doesn't create a product page for customers to visit. It allows authors to order print copies and rest easy knowing their book will launch on its intended date. Now, if you want to run a pre-order for your print books, look into Ingram Spark, Book Vault, or Lulu. They've got you covered in some capacity, whether on or off Amazon. Number four, no scheduled promo pricing. Should you ever want to run a limited time pricing promotion, you'll need to manually do it in your KDP dashboard on or before your intended date. Then when the pricing promotion is over, you'll have to fix it again. Now, since it takes up to 72 hours for pricing changes to take effect on the platform, this can leave you in a rather precarious position if you're relying on KDP to get your pricing right. On other platforms like Kobo Writing Life, Apple Books for Authors, and Google Play Books, you can schedule the promotional pricing dates well in advance and won't have to worry about switching pricing before and after a promo. Number five, no direct line for suspended and terminated account holders. KDP has one very questionable spot in their business model, suspensions and terminations. It's not really clear whether detected infractions come through machine automation or human vetting since most suspended and terminated account holders get a vague email offering zero explanation beyond, ha, we caught you doing something bad. They also don't have a way for suspended or terminated account holders to communicate with the team beyond replying the automated email. KDP seems to have a guilty until proven innocent philosophy offering no real recourse. KDP needs to have a better communication system for recently suspended or terminated account holders and potentially an arbitration process that allows folks to defend themselves and prove their innocence. Number six, copy paste email support. I've mostly found KDP's email support to be lackluster, almost like it's run by someone who needs to fulfill a quota so they answer as quick as they can, oftentimes giving the most outlandish answers to a basic question. It's like they have a copy-paste system that never truly recognize each account holder's unique needs. Are there some helpful account support reps through email? Sure. 
but it's a far cry from the quality they already have in place for the phone support and live support. And sadly, those two features are available on a limited schedule, leaving quite a few account holders to rely on the less than satisfactory email support. Now, KDP needs to take notes from aggregate publishing platform Draft the Digital. Their customer support feels customized to my needs and never just aims to answer support ticket without fully understanding the issue at hand. Number seven, no option to delete books. Should you ever want to delist and delete a book from your account, you're out of luck. Whatever you publish through KDP remains there forever, reminding you of your less than desirable publications and in some cases, leaving up books they have blocked in the past. A brief moment in history around like 2017 to 2018, KDP allowed account holders to delete their books, but it was here one minute and gone the next. Now, more recently, they added the archive feature that will remove your publication from your dashboard, placing it in the background for you to retrieve at a later date. This is another goofy policy. Just let us delete the title and be done with it. It'll create less stress for KDP and keep our digital clutter to a minimum in our account. Number eight, limited hardcover options. KDP account holders looking to publish hardcover books must have a manuscript with more than 72 pages while selecting from only five trim sizes. Hardcover print options rolled out to quite a few account holders a while ago, fresh out of closed beta access. Sadly, nothing has changed about hardcover books, forcing authors to look into alternatives that'll fulfill a variety of trim sizes and page counts. Not to mention, you get no expanded distribution for your hardcover books. I imagine KDP will eventually give more trim sizes, lower page counts, and expanded distribution in due time. Till then, you can look into print publishing alternatives like Ingram Spark, Book Vault, or Lulu that all have the distributions of the Amazon marketplace with hardcover books. Number nine, expanded distributions limitations. Prior to KDP print rolling out in late 2016, most self-publishers leaned on another Amazon-owned company called CreateSpace. You could publish your book to many Amazon marketplaces and through expanded distribution, getting your book into many online retailers and libraries through Ingram Book Group's distribution channels. Now, Ingram Book Group reaches over 40,000 online retailers, bookstores, and libraries. But for whatever reason, KDP only leverages the US and UK distribution of Ingram Book Group, missing out on literally thousands of other regional distribution options. Meanwhile, KDP takes a generous 20% cut of each of your print book royalties through expanded distribution, leaving you with a 40% royalty, minus the print fees, of course. Cut out the middleman and just go right to the source to get the best deal possible. Ingram Spark is the path of least resistance if you want to leverage all of Ingram Book Group's reach. Number 10, KDP selects misuse of the ABSR. On Amazon, the term bestseller doesn't necessarily indicate actual sales for ebooks enrolled in the KDP Select program. Any ebook enrolled in the KDP Select program has a variety of marketing and promotional options not given to other ebooks. Enrolling your ebook in KDP Select places your book into an exclusivity program where customers can check it out in a subscription based service. Each checkout pretty much registers as an actual sale on Amazon, thereby positively impacting the Amazon bestseller rank, also known as the ABSR. You literally don't have to sell a single ebook to be a bestseller on Amazon if you're enrolled in the KDP Select program. I doubt most customers know this little discrepancy, and most would likely agree with me that bestseller indicates sales, not checkouts. Now, Amazon needs to create a separate ranking for KDP Select enrolled books so their bestseller list actually reflects cold, hard sales. Number 11, KDP Select's Exclusivity Agreement. When you enroll an ebook into the KDP Select program, you're given many advantages for keeping the digital version of your book exclusively on Amazon. Sadly, this means your ebook will not reach customers who don't use Amazon or can't access Amazon altogether. And if you're anything like me, I like to have my ebook available in libraries so those without the financial resources to buy my book can still read it while supporting me. The KDP alternative Kobo Writing Life has a similar program to KDP Select called Kobo Plus, where readers can can check out your ebook through a subscription based system. However, they realize authors need to reach other readers who can't or won't buy from the Kobo platform. And the nice thing about Kobo Writing Life is they don't require exclusivity to take advantage of the Kobo Plus program. KDP needs to follow suit. It'll save them time and resources of tracking down and punishing account holders accidentally or intentionally for misusing the KDP Select program. Number 12, KDP selects growing pool with diminishing KNPC payouts. 
In July 2015, KDP rolled out the new and improved model for payouts in the KDP Select program. Every month, KDP gathers the pool of money from subscribers, then evenly distributes to enrolled ebooks based on pages read. Even though more recently the KDP Select Global Fund reached an astounding $50 million, the amount paid out per page has remained stagnant and in some instances has dipped down. Book marketing expert Joe Solari shared in an article on his website how it's much worse than anyone knows. When you account for inflation, you'll see the less than half a cent per page read is less than what it was back in 2015. I don't have a solution for this one beyond KDP vetting and removing less than desirable titles gaming the system. I'm sure they're doing their best to remedy that. Till then, it's a hard pass on KDP select for how much it pays out per page. Number 13, reviews and ratings. The ratings and review system on Amazon is wonky and anger inducing. And I realize this is probably not a KDP problem, but they are still, you know, part of the larger corporation of Amazon. Ratings is the more recent addition to the platform that I'm sure helps get some social proof for a product, but it leaves little understanding of how self publishers can improve their product or what they've done right without some context for that specific rating. That's okay, I'll still settle with that. What I can't settle for is the flagrant abuse of the review system on Amazon where customers are clearly told that the review can't include sellers in the customer service they provide, ordering issues and returns, shipping packaging, product condition and damage, and the shipping costs and speed. Yet countless low reviews are published on books citing those previously mentioned issues while stating the book was fine or that they haven't even read the damn book. Really, how is this even getting through? Number 14, region-specific category selection. In 2023, KDP launched a new book category selection system where account holders could select the exact category placement on their primary marketplace for Amazon. But KDP also no longer accepts requests for category selection outside of your primary marketplace, instead opting to select it for you based on your primary marketplace selection and seven backend keywords. If you don't like it, too bad. They're not taking requests. The solution? Give account holders the ability to choose categories for any and all marketplaces rather than listing it in categories that may or may not fit the book. Number 15, ghost categories. In the recent category selection system launch, account holders truly believe the category they picked would be listed on Amazon's marketplace. That's not always true. In fact, the team at Publisher Rocket and Kindlepreneur detected 27% of the categories aren't even a thing. Labeled as ghost categories, these lists don't really exist. Any books listed in those categories or these ghost categories as you would call them will never get a bestseller tag or enjoy the benefits of exposure in an actual category. The only solution right now is to get access to Publisher Rocket. For 97 bucks, you can identify the ghost categories and pick better category placement that'll serve your book much better. Of course, Publisher Rocket has a variety of other great uses, including keyword research, competition analysis, and Amazon advertising support. Get details about Publisher Rocket when you visit my affiliate link at dalelinks.com slash rocket. Number 16, price matching without notice. Occasionally, Amazon will mark down or price cut your book on their marketplaces. The good part is you still get paid what your actual royalty rate is supposed to be at the regular price. The bad part is they often won't even tell you. This means you could miss out on a great price promo to share with your readers or email subscribers. The solution? Get access to the free browser extension, Reader Scout. It monitors your books for any fluctuation in prices or an increase in reviews. Visit dailings.com slash Reader Scout to get access today. It's free. There's no upsell on it. Number 17, poor vetting process. I'd previously asked the KDP team what their vetting process was like for books, automated or human vetted, to which I received a no comment response. Their vetting system is flawed, allowing pirated books, copyright infringement, low quality content, and hammered garbage poorly generated by artificial intelligence through their system. While they seem to have an active auditing process for all their accounts, it doesn't seem to catch all infractions. If you search hard enough on the Amazon platform, you'll find a number of pornographic titles published through KDP, even though pornography is not allowed on the platform per their terms and conditions. Whether human vetted or machine automated, KDP needs to tighten up on their approval process or risk further PR nightmares they've already experienced over the past few years. 
Number 18, no clear terms and conditions. The KDP terms and conditions are simply unreadable. Unless you have a law degree or the patience to wade through all the legalese, reading them and understanding them are two entirely different things. Add to it, they have quite a few other rules baked into various other areas like their conditions of use and their help page. If KDP wants more account holders to abide by their rules, they need to put them all in one place in very clear language that even a fourth grader can understand. Then they need to thoroughly train and their support staff to know this system upside down, inside out, and everything else in between. Countless self-publishers have shared the contradicting information they get from support reps and the confusing terms and conditions. KDP needs to tighten up this area and at any time a change occurs, push notifications to all account holders to avoid any aggravations or gotchas. Number 19, review manipulations and takedowns. Back in the day, and probably to a certain extent now, some authors using the KDP platform relied on the author review swaps to get traction in the Amazon marketplace. The practice started out innocently enough till someone came along and scaled the model by eliminating the need to read the actual book, instead giving a beaming review and a questionable summary of the book inside that review. As you can imagine, these types of reviews are frowned upon, as are fake reviews paid for by the author. Now, while Amazon tries their best to sniff out the bad actors, they they inadvertently attack innocent authors getting legitimate and actual reviews from real people. Countless reviewers who get access to advanced copies for reviews have their posting rejected or altogether shadow banned because some machine automations sense foul play. These false positives are frustrating and leave authors wondering why they should even bother with getting reviews. The solution? That's something Amazon needs to get good on. They're paid the billions of bucks, so come up with a better system that doesn't create collateral damage while they try keeping their platform clean of fake reviews. Number 20, quality control for print books. In early 2023, I compared a number of print-on-demand companies and their various types of books. In my comparison of hardcover books, KDP scored low due to low-quality printing that created warping in the cover and pages. Now, mind you, this was only a text-based book and it wasn't anything that was image-heavy. Other companies didn't have the same issue, leading me to believe KDP needs to reevaluate the quality of their hardcover books. And they need to have an overhaul of their entire quality control system. It's great that Amazon fulfills print orders the fastest of any platform, but at what cost? It's almost like they have nothing to lose because customers aren't going to give them the bad reviews. They're going to pass it on to us, the authors. Now, Amazon KDP needs to slow down with their print orders and thoroughly vet each book for quality and accuracy before shipping it out. Number 21, limited analytics. I've been in the self-publishing business for over nine years and in the YouTube business for about seven years now. Now, one thing I've appreciated about YouTube is the transparency they provide the real-time analytics inside the dashboard showing us what we're doing right and wrong. Between how many clicks a video got to average view duration and beyond, YouTubers have at least a tenuous grasp of how their videos perform. But Amazon, Ever the black box they are, won't provide us with the details about how many customers visit our product page, what the conversion rate is like, and how we can improve those areas. We simply have to just throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. The only true metrics we get are sales, and for KDP Select Enrolled eBooks, of course, page reads. I can't even imagine the level of work that would require, but if KDP could at least give us the option to know how our book is performing beyond sales, we could better improve our book and its metadata to convert to more sales. Number 22, Cover Creator is an abomination. This one is simple. KDP Cover Creator sucks. It's never been good, and most anyone who uses it essentially are destined to the bottom of the barrel sales. The cover creator has very little flexibility and is often wonky and slow. It's pretty bad when Canva provides more robust options and flexibility. Heck, if you go with the KDP alternative platform, draft the digital for your print books, all you need is your ebook cover and they help you with the rest. Between color matching, a back cover, and spine, you have more flexibility than KDP over on draft the digital. It's time Time KDP updates this tool to accommodate more cash-strapped authors, this option for designing a passable book cover on the platform instead of in Canva or using free software like GIMP. I know, I've done that.
Number 23, traditional publishing over indie publishing. Amazon makes it very clear they aren't in the business of accommodating indie authors. You'll see quite a few traditionally published books getting higher priority with special treatment for pricing, additional images on their product carousel, and even cover gifts for their Amazon signed authors like Dean Koontz. Even more recently, some indie authors spotted a glitch on Amazon through mobile browsers. Somehow a new line in the product details included subject keywords, exposing thousands of books and their keywords. Lo and behold, despite KDP limiting authors to only seven backend keywords, they gave unrestricted access to posting as many keywords as they wanted to the traditional published books. What's good for one should be good for the other. Come on, KDP, make it right. Number 24, digital rights management is dumb. Digital rights management, or DRM, is an option available for eBooks where in theory it's supposed to protect your eBooks from getting pirated. However, once an author chooses this option, they can't back out because it's locked in. Unless you delist the book and publish it anew, DRM is permanent as soon as you hit that publish. And it only penalizes customers who buy your book by limiting device sharing. And in some cases, they can technically revoke access to any eBooks years down the road if they wanted to. And when pirates want to steal your book, folks, DRM is merely a minor speed bump to them. Search up how to remove DRM from an eBook here on YouTube to see just how easy it is. Seriously, pause this video, open up another tab, and look it up. You will see, it's dead simple. While it's your job as an account holder to publish eBooks, Pirates equally make it their job to get what they want at whatever expense. Get rid of DRM. It serves no real purpose except to give a false sense of security to authors who don't really know any better. Number 25, international account holders left with no real answers or direction. Countless emails, direct messages, and comments on my videos flood my feed every day. The problem? KDP never gives any instructions on how foreign account holders can set up a bank account, get information on taxes, or any other relevant details to help them succeed. This affects quite a few folks in areas like Nigeria, Zimbabwe, and other countries outside of Amazon's service area. After 15 years, KDP has to have some instructions to help these account holders. If they're afraid of liability, then refer them out to trusted sources. Leaving them hanging only frustrates them, driving them to ask random bald-headed guys on YouTube for answers. KDP should take more responsibility in guiding all account holders, regardless of the region they reside in. Number 26, no brick and mortar presence. You'd think that when Amazon opened brick and mortar bookstores, they would have stocked more KDP published books. Nope. They were in the business of selling mostly traditionally published books. Go figure, they had to close all their locations last year after seven years of work. You know who could have driven traffic to those bookstores? Indie authors. KDP has hundreds of thousands of authors and self-publishers. Rather than try to ape the competition like Barnes & Noble, they could have stood apart from the rest by serving an underserved market. This goodwill could have gone a long way. And don't buy into the hype they put into the expanded distribution for print books. Yes, Ingram Book Group has reached into brick and mortar stores, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee your book will be stocked. And let's face it, physical bookstores aren't gonna be willing to showcase Amazon printed books. There are few exceptions to that rule, very few. The solution is if you want to get into any type of brick and mortar stores, go right to the source, head on over to Ingram Spark, and then you're gonna probably have to negotiate your placement onto those shelves. Number 27, print proof watermarks. Prior to KDP Print, authors had to access KDP's sister company, CreateSpace, for print fulfillment. Now, when you ordered a proof copy, they'd send you a near-perfect version of what the customer would get, with the exception of the last page having a watermark. Not a big deal. For KDP Print, they slap a watermark on your front cover as if you're going to pirate or distribute your own book illegally. This is goofy. If I'm paying a premium to see how my proof looks, I shouldn't be punished with a less than perfect proof copy. The same one customers receive. How can I genuinely experience what the customers do if I'm robbed of that opportunity at the first glance? Do better, KDP. This is one of the most useless features KDP has. Number 28, they need a more modern user interface. 
KDP alternative websites like Draft the Digital, Kobo Writing Life, and Publish Drive all have modern user interfaces that have a clean and very clear dashboard. For whatever reason, KDP has yet to fully update and modernize their dashboard. We've seen a number of updates through Amazon Author Central and the more recent official rollout of the KDP Reports dashboard. But for whatever reason, we're stuck with this old interface that is in dire need of a facelift. I totally understand this is subjective and may not take away from what you accomplish with them. However, consider the amount of revenue indie authors drive through the KDP platform, you'll think otherwise. At least a fraction of that revenue should be funneled into developing and launching a more modern user interface. Number 29, Kindle Vela. There are so many things to address in Kindle Vela. Where do I begin? This serialized story publishing option through KDP allows authors another way to monetize their short form episodic content. Sadly, over the past year and a half, not much has improved about the platform. It's still only available in the US for US account holders only, leaving other regional account holders in the cold. Add to it, camps of money-hungry authors conspire in Facebook groups and public forums to collaboratively inflate their sales numbers, likes, and faves to gain a favorable bonus payout without truly reaching actual readers. Also, the bonus payout is vague with no real rhyme or reason to how and who they pay out. And quite frankly, the entire system is dominated by romance and erotica, leaving little room for success for other niches. By the way, why is erotica admonished and hidden from most search traffic and bestseller lists for KDP while it's proudly displayed on Kindle Vela with no real safety precautions put in place for minors? Quite frankly, that's reckless. Either choose to post it publicly everywhere or not at all. Number 30, the adult only box. Often talked about in the steamy romance and erotica realm, the adult-only checkbox is a way for authors to flag their content as not for minors. Yet by selecting this box, the author is essentially suppressing their reach and landing in the adult dungeon where there's less discoverability and by some authors' opinions, less chance for success. Many authors who veer deep into the adults-only waters would rather not select the box, instead opting to push out content unintended for minors. Now, I'm not going to ignore the fact that Amazon shouldn't be responsible for somebody else's children, but the fact of the matter is authors wouldn't avoid selecting an adults-only box if they knew they'd reach a wider audience. Amazon needs to consider creating a special adults-only version of their site that requires age validation. This covers Amazon's tail while giving the adult-based content home for the ravenous fans instead of tucked away in some stuffy adult dungeon. It's clear there's an audience for it, so why hide it from an eager buying adults-only audience? Number 31, contradicting KDP support answers. You know what sucks the most is when you're leaning on KDP support for answering questions only to get contradicting advice from their reps, whether through email, phone, or live support. It should be KDP support's mission to deliver a consistent message across the entire platform and clear up ambiguities with their staff so the authors aren't left confused about what to do and how to do it. This is a huge reason why I tell all authors to never solely rely on KDP because with confusing legalese and their terms and conditions and additional rules sprinkled throughout their help pages and website, it's easy to make the wrong step, especially if a KDP support rep gives you the wrong answer. The solution? Track all conversations with KDP support reps and diversify. Don't simply limit your reach to KDP. First time authors are okay here, but I recommend expanding beyond Amazon to safeguard your author business. Number 32, split payments for co-authors. Co-authoring a book is a great way to split the workload and dip into a deeper audience between two authors. Sadly, if you want to split the earnings with your co-author through KDP, you'll have to figure out what you owe your co-author from month to month and pay them accordingly. KDP simply doesn't have an option to split payments between authors. You're simply left to your own devices. The KDP alternative platform, Drafted Digital, offers payment splitting at no additional charge, allowing all rights holders to get their cut of each each sale. You don't have to worry about tracking earnings and divvying out the pay. They do it for you. KDP needs to catch up with Draft to Digital if they expect authors to continue viewing them as the ideal platform to publish books on. Number 33, pricing clash between ebooks and print books. 
Pricing your books can be difficult enough as it is, so when you add the complexity of value-added tax, also known as VAT, it gets a little dicier, especially since how VAT is accounted for in ebooks and print books distributed in Europe. For ebooks, the amount you set in the box is what the customer will be charged with VAT included. However, for print books, you have to dial in the amount without VAT, then KDP presents you with the actual price including VAT. KDP needs to get the print book pricing set up much like the ebook pricing set setup is. They've had print books available since late 2016, so I think it's fair to expect them to clean up this part of their interface so it's less confusing for authors. Number 34, slow proof ordering, fast customer fulfillment. When customers order your book through Amazon, they can often get it as quick as two to three days. However, if you order author copies, it can take as long as one to two weeks to receive them despite paying nearly the exact same price as a customer. Why? Is this so lopsided? Account holders should get the same priority as customers considering they're essentially buying the same thing. It's goofy how they fulfill fast for one and not the other. Number 35, random account termination with no justification. According to the KDP terms and conditions, we are entitled to terminate this agreement and your access to your program account at any time. We will notify you upon termination. They essentially can terminate your account anytime they want without justification and have done so many times over the years. Account holders are left scratching their heads in most instances since the email notifications are typically very vague. The communication might as well be, hey, we caught you doing some bad things. We don't care if you disagree with us. If if they're going to have this type of termination in place, they need to have a better system to clear up any false positives. For whatever reason they may think they have, everyone should be innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. Sadly, it's their game and we're merely playing it. My recommendation, diversify your author platform by publishing books onto other platforms beyond KDP. Number 36, interior formatting tools for print and eBooks. Kindle Create is an interior formatting software specifically designed with KDP in mind, so much so that all ebook files save to KPF, which is only readable on KDP. They then convert it to EPUB in your dashboard and you're set. Now, I can make an argument that the software has its share of issues. Overall, it's great having free software to do it all for you. Now, on platforms like draft to digital they have their interior formatting software integrated into the upload process, removing friction and making the publishing process near seamless. KDP should adopt this system and integrate Kindle Create directly into their dashboard while still offering the option to upload your own content without using Kindle Create. Number 37, audiobook support and distribution. I don't like Audiobook Creation Exchange, also known as ACX, for a variety of reasons including no pricing control, low royalties, and a questionable approach to customer refunds. I know this is probably a problem with ACX more than it is KDP, but Hear me out on this one. In December of 2018, KDP absorbed its sister company, CreateSpace for print-on-demand books. The process wasn't the smoothest, but now that it's been about five years since that move, I feel pretty comfortable in KDP doing the same thing to ACX. KDP should absorb ACX and keep all iterations of our books under one shelf. Then when claiming rights on an ebook or print book to get audiobook distribution, we have irrefutable proof of rights. P.S. If you want to know more about the shenanigans happening with ACX, visit audiblegate.com. It will shock you. Number 38, keyword recommendations. Keywords build a bridge between your ideal reader and a book. Selecting the right keywords can be overwhelming and sometimes frustrating. Why not remove the guesswork out of the whole process and get the account holders what they want? In YouTube, you get a research tab that provides keywords commonly searched by your viewers. Why don't KDP account holders get the same thing for their books? Keywords that your buying customers search when they buy your book. It'd make life a little easier if KDP could be a bit more transparent in this area because if we chose the right keywords that converts to a sale, then it's a win for everyone. Number 39, active video presence. Did you know Amazon KDP actually has a YouTube channel here? Yeah. It's been there for years, but only acts as a video repository for tutorials and promotional content. They don't really focus on building community since they pretty much never respond to comments or address common concerns plaguing KDP account holders. Now on YouTube, there's a channel called Creator Insider that's run by the team behind YouTube. Every week they launch updates, answer questions, and cover any relevant concerns. This personal touch has gone a long way in establishing a connection with video creators. Now. 
Imagine if KDP did the same thing. It really wouldn't require much work on their part and would go a long way to building a real connection with your account holders and community. I mean, come on, KDP. If I can do it, your team can definitely do it. Number 40, clear understanding of the vetting process behind the scenes. When you upload and publish your book through KDP, there's a vetting system that approves or rejects your content. However, it's not very clear about how it's done. Is it human vetted or machine automated? I asked KDP for comment and they declined to answer. Now, I'm sure from a liability standpoint, they don't want to bring on that type of heat since quite a few titles slip into the system that clearly violate the terms and conditions. Meanwhile, perfectly fine titles get blocked or even result in account termination. And as previously shared, they won't give you a solid reason for what you did and how you can resolve it or prove your innocence. I understand hiring a human to vet the thousands of books uploaded every day can be a pain, so machine automation seems like the most efficient way to do things. If that's the case, KDP needs to put a system in place for recently suspended or terminated account holders to communicate with them directly. Number 41, false takedowns. Here's one of the craziest policies I've seen on Amazon in general. If an account holder accuses another account holder of copyright or trademark infringement, they don't need proof of it. <laughs> like literally, they just, hey, they're stealing my stuff. That's left to the defendant to prove which kind of sucks. The whole thing could be avoided if the accuser provided legitimate documentation of their IP, whether through copyright or trademark. Having this safeguard in place will squash out any bad actors looking to snuff out their competition through a series of false accusations. If the accuser is caught filing a false takedown, they should be punished for wasting KDP's time and resources. Number 42, three strike system. Over the years, I've heard many heartbreaking stories of KDP wrongfully terminating accounts, despite the account holder not having a full understanding of what they did wrong. On YouTube, video creators have a three-strike system. After three infractions, YouTube will terminate the account. The appeals process is still available to those video creators should they want to prove their innocence. KDP needs to offer the same. Some account holders aren't well versed in the terms and conditions and the various rules scattered across the help pages. Why not give the account holder the benefit of the doubt and the ability to correct themselves? If after three shots, they don't get it right, then cut them loose. I get it, it's a business, so you can't be giving people too many chances. Number 43, animated covers. Something I mentioned previously was how traditionally published books are allowed animated covers using a GIF. Why not make this available to KDP account holders? It's clearly working on the website, so why keep it locked away from indie authors? Or are we getting a clear indication that we are less than trad pub authors, so we aren't worthy of these options? Unblocking this option would be a game changer for everyone and could potentially increase sales. Number 44, posting videos on product pages. Beside customer reviews and video creators and the Amazon Influencer program, there really is no way to post a video to your product page. It's clear that Amazon believes in the power of videos to convert sales, so why reserve that option for just reviews and other non-book related products? Make it available to KDP account holders so they have a way to post a video trailer or a brief reading or any number of videos that could enhance the product page. And KDP gets bonus points if we can place the video on an image carousel like the other non-book related products. They could even make this feature available through the a content section or through Author Central. Number 45, multiple product images on one page. Every book's product page has an image carousel. For ebooks, it's typically just the cover. Whereas for print books, you get the front and back cover. Some other books have the luxury of adding more images to influence browsing customers to buy. Amazon or KDP need to both stop locking features away from indie authors using this service. This biased relationship is frustrating, especially considering the insane revenue indie authors drive through their platform. Equip us with the same tools as these other account holders, not using KDP. I know this is slightly redundant, but I've repeated this problem for good reason. This unfair treatment really makes indie authors out to be inferior in every way. We aren't. So please stop treating us that way. Number 46, separate categories for low content books. When KDP rolled out the new category selection feature in the first step of the upload process, it really helped to expedite the publishing process. The first thing I did when getting access to this new tool was to check for categories specific to low content books. Nope, not a darn thing was put in place. Meanwhile, 
These low content books are slipped into irrelevant categories like fiction or nonfiction. By and large, low content books are normally suitable in other categories like stationery or office supplies. Now I will give them credit since they have special categories for what they don't consider low content books like coloring books or activity books. But if you have a blank journal, you're out of luck and have to choose a category you think it closely relates to. In the meantime, it's taking up a valuable spot meant for relevant titles. Quit the messing around here, Amazon, and create categories to address low content books. That way your customers aren't confused and your authors aren't pissed off from low content books squatting in an irrelevant category. Number 47, delete listings with no sales after a certain time period. Recently, KDP announced a new daily upload maximum of three books per day. This new policy was addressing the concern of account holders publishing loads of AI-generated books or low-content books in the hundreds per day. This is not an exaggeration. There were account holders uploading hundreds in a single day. But the problem is these product listings take up valuable data on Amazon servers while never collecting a single dime. It's a waste for everyone. In the Emerge by Amazon program, if they used to have a policy in place where product doesn't sell within one year of posting, it's deleted. This deletion does not reflect badly on the account holder, but is merely a way to keep their platform cleaned of any unused product listings. Imagine removing all the useless and poorly generated AI content and low content books. It'll make the site cleaner and less bogged down with trash. Number 48, low barrier of entry to KDP. Sometimes the biggest issue with KDP is how easy it is to start an account and publish books. While quite a few account holders have the best intentions, unfortunately their books are less than satisfactory, driving down the value and trust built on the Amazon platform. Let's raise that barrier. KDP could first get all account holders to complete their free course called KDP Jumpstart and pass a test over the material. If they fail the test, they can't publish any books through KDP. If they pass the test, then KDP knows they have an account holder who's more familiar with how they want the platform used. Heck, rope in the terms and conditions as part of the test so all account holders are not just blindly accepting the terms, instead they intimately know the terms by proving it through a past test. Just a thought. Number 49, team management access. I do not and will not ever give anyone the login for my account. It's dicey and creates a whole bevy of issues. While a lot of authors might not have this problem, account holders that are scaling their business might need a team to access the account without having access to sensitive banking or tax info. The KDP Alternative Publish Drive offers team access where account holders can provide limited access to team members. This helps create an assembly line of sorts where various members on the team fulfill their duties so the project fires off much faster. KDP could create team access where I could invite one of my virtual assistants or employees to access the account without having my personal login. Number 50, wide ebook distribution. While Amazon does take the lion's share of online ebook publication profits, it's not a monopoly. Platforms like Apple, Kobo, Google Play, and more are proof there is life outside the Amazon marketplace for ebooks. I know it's asking a lot for Amazon to cooperate with their competitors, so let me dial this request back a bit. Why not work with other business types that aren't in direct competition like libraries or educational institutions? Places like Overdrive, Hoopla, Biblioteca, Palace Marketplace and more are great potential partners in reaching libraries. Heck, KDP alternatives like draft to digital Publish Drive, Ingram Spark, and more use these avenues. For all my complaints, I actually still like the KDP platform and feel it's an ideal place for most indie authors to use. In fact, I did an entire video where I covered 50 tips and insights about KDP that you didn't know. I'll see you on over there.